I started working in eighth grade because it was part of our curriculum to use GIS and I only started the project a few months before I turned it in so I took only a few months to do my project. I chose this topic because I've always been interested in epidemiology and the pattern of diseases and I heard about this topic in a language arts class because we were looking at current events and the story of the Hopkins outbreak came up and I thought it'd be very interesting and it wasn't once I had that it wasn't hard for me to decide at all I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wish I had known that when inputting data into a map you could use a table to do it all at once instead of having to go and do them one by one because that's how I did it with map notes. I put in each point separately and I didn't know until after I was done that you could use a table to put them in all at once. When you do your research just really go really in depth into what you're doing and then when you analyze it see what you can do to make it mappable and make it so you can put it onto a map. Try to relate it to each other. I really liked going to all the different sessions that you can go to and learning about the new products and new ways I can use ArcGIS and it's made me really excited to see what I can do in the future. So for this map the red dots represent all 23 of the victims of the Hopkins Legion disease outbreak and then the yellow dots are cooling towers which is what the source of Legion disease usually is. The green dot is the cooling tower that caused the outbreak and here I show that by using um, the analysis tool to create buffers around each of these points, you can see the potential search area and it really helps investigators uh, quickly identify what the source could be. My name is Donovan Vitali and I just graduated from Monroe High School. I began working with GIS three years ago, uh, the end of my freshman year. I started off as an internship at the local planning department and I've just stuck with it for the past three years. It, it took a little bit of brainstorming, but there's a lot of quarries in Monroe. Those are really interesting to me because people don't really think about them or talk about them too much. So once I had that idea, I was just running with it. It's important to make sure that you have a so what of your presentation, a main audience and a main goal that you want to accomplish with it. And then more looking into the story map, working with geoanalysis was really interesting, something I hadn't really done in the past. So I'd recommend looking into that. I'd recommend picking a topic that you find really interesting that makes researching it uh, easier to do and you'll be able to go more in depth into that research process which will help you in the long run. So many different people from all different walks of life all united under GIS. It's really interesting to see people from everywhere around the world coming together. It's cool. So this map has all the quarries that are in Monroe County. These little colored blocks are all the quarries and if you were to click on one you'd see the name of the quarry, how many acres are in that quarry and then also the materials that you might be f extracting from that quarry. I teach 8th grade social studies which is geography at Olson Middle School in Bloomington, Minnesota. All 8th graders do geography, yes, and uh, the winner, Abby, was part of my gifted class and so their curriculum is a little bit different but still geography focused. Uh, I was lucky enough to have Jim Hansen, my teaching mentor, bring it to my attention that this was a transformative tool that we should be using, and with his guidance, I totally get it. I think it is an amazing tool. So in the gifted class, I have the students do some smaller projects to get them comfortable with ArcGIS and uh, try out the different story map types that there are. And then uh, in about March, the students were ready to take on the online competition and, uh, and really take it independently and, and see where they could go. The gifted kids were required to complete an online competition entry and uh, they could work in pairs or they could work by themselves. And most students, interestingly, chose to work on their own. Um, and then we did allocate class time, especially at the beginning of the project, to kick it off and, and get it going. Uh, and then in the middle, we were able to focus on other parts of our curriculum. And then towards the end, the kids let me know that they needed time to finish up. So we gave them a little more time, too. I think I missed the boat there. I think that the GeoMentor program it seems amazing, and I will absolutely be incorporating that from here on out. Um, I was lucky to have the support of Jim Hansen, who's uh, pretty good with navigating GIS, um, but I think we'll try and reach out to the community uh, of GIS professionals around our town now. Uh, so Abby is in a class of uh, very supportive kids and they were very excited for her and I think really proud of her. Um, but I think our school and larger community, they don't really get what the contest is and maybe they don't really understand what GIS is. And so I've been trying to document our experience here and hopefully I'll be able to spread the word a little bit and get her the accolades that she deserves from our school and, and from Bloomington. 
that's the right way to go. I know that we need to be doing it, so I would tell other teachers to just say yes and you'll figure it out along the way. Don't be scared of it, just do it. My name is uh, Russell Columbus. I am a high school science teacher in Monroe, Michigan. All grades of the high school level. This year I was teaching 11th and 12th graders in physics, but I've taught all subjects over the years. Um, when I was teaching biology, environmental science, and stuff like that, we did a lot of work with GIS. Um, we did things such as cataloging rare plants in our county. Uh, we did studies on the water quality of the river in our community. Uh, I remember one project where we compared uh, birds' nests on our campus from one year to the next using a nice little swipe story map that I put together for the kids to use uh, when the story maps first came out. Uh, and many other projects similar to that over the years. Uh, in this particular year, we had uh, Donovan working on his own. Uh, he wasn't in a class that I taught or anything like that. Um, so I didn't do anything with the class this year, but in previous years we've had uh, full classes that worked on it or individuals that I would mentor on the side uh, as well. So we've done it a variety of ways over the past couple of years. Definitely. Uh, Donovan works for the Monroe County Planning Commission and Mr. Jeff Boudre is the GIS analyst there and he's been uh, a great resource and uh, provided a lot of help to Donovan and Donovan of course has provided a lot of help to him in the course of his internship where he's uh, done a lot of parcel mapping and other projects for our community. Well, this is the third year that we've been involved and the amount of support and interest has kind of grown year after year to the point this year where they actually ran a front page uh, newspaper story in the Monroe Evening News. So they had a picture of Donovan in, in the office there pulling off a map off of a printer and talked a little bit about what he has done uh, to reach this level. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and I think even you know the folks at the high school are all pretty supportive of what we're doing here and really uh, happy that uh, we've had these opportunities, I think. We really see the potential for developing youth in a way that's a very non-traditional sort of schooling. We can use the technology and the resources that Esri's put together and couple that with some willing and capable students and some willing and capable geomentors, high school teachers, professionals, etc. And I'd really like to see a situation where we have you know, high school students that are doing internships throughout the state, even throughout the country, even internationally as well. I've talked to folks from multiple countries around the globe here this weekend and told them about what we're doing and, and they want to start similar things. And um, hopefully I'll be able to help them out to do that. Thank you.